We've now created an API. We have routes for our users to hit and do whatever they want to do with it. We have data so they can store data back and get it back again. But therein lies now a new problem. What if we want somebody, especially with a to-do app like it seems that we've been writing, what if we want somebody to write a task and then when they get the task, they only get their task. They don't get somebody else's task. Or maybe more importantly, that they can't mark somebody else's tasks as, um, as completed or delete them or update them. They can, only, they can only get and manage their own stuff. And in that case, we need authentication. Now, there's a lot to say about authentication. We're going to do a very brief introduction to it in case you're not familiar with it or feel overwhelmed by the entire idea. But I want to preface this with a caveat that if you're writing this for a business, if this is uh, especially something where uh, money is going to change hands for it, I do highly recommend using a third party system like, for example, Auth0. But we're going to go into uh, into this just sort of like to understand how authentication works and uh, how you can create it on your own if you really, really need to. We're also going to begin by using a very naive approach uh, here in how auth works. And then we're going to do a second pass on it and uh, hash the password and use a jot instead of a, you know, quote, unquote, random string that we're going to use for our token. Uh, and then make it much better. So we're going to start with creating the account. This is when a user first comes to our application. We want to know who they are and establish a relationship with them. And in that case, that means them giving us their username and their password. And then we know that if they come back later and give us that same username and password combination, they must be the same person. So let's, uh, let's create a route to sort of do that. We're going to create a new request. Uh, this is going to be create account. Uh, this is creating something in the database, so it's going to be a post. We're going to go to HTTP slash local host port 3000 uh, users. Uh, in the body, we're going to take in a username. Uh, in this case, let's just do this as Brooks. And password. Uh, and I'm not going to put any password requirements on this. Um, uh, that's sort of out of scope of this, but you can imagine where when we create the account, we could say, oh, it must be a minimum of X characters or something like that. Uh, okay, so password one, two, three, four. Sure, why not? That this user is foolish and really wants to just use a simple password. Um, obviously, not working yet. Our server is running, but we don't have this route. Let's fix that. This is going to be very similar to everything else we've done in data. We're going to create a new route for create user. And in mod, we're going to mod create user. Uh, we're going to have a pub async function create user. And we're going to use that. Let's use create user, create user. And we'll create a route for this too. So route uh, users post create user. Okay, so far so good. Um, now, what do we want to take in? We know we want to take in that request user. So we're going to have a pub struct request user. This is going to have the, um, it's going to derive deserialized. And we're going to have the username, which is a string, and a password, which is a string. And we're going to take that in. So we're going to have a JSON uh, this is a request user, JSON request user. Uh, we also need the database itself. So we have the extension, uh, database, extension, 
database connection. Okay, um, uh, we know we're gonna want to return a result uh, with something coming back. So what exactly do we need to come back? Let's think about that. So we wanna have a pub struct response user. Well, uh, let's, we probably want to, to pass back the username so they can see that like, hey, they, they have like the information about the user that they want to have. So we could have username, um, you're a string. Uh, they probably wanna know what their ID is so they can do updates to it. So they, you know, uh, update to users slash, you know, five or, or so. Okay, so ID is 932, that's good. I am not going to put a password in there. I do not want to show off the same password that they sent to us because that's a that's a pretty big security violation. We don't we want to minimize the amount of time that that password is on the network being passed back and forth. But instead, we can send back something else representing the password. Something that if the user passes it to us with any request, we'll know, oh, this is them, or at least this is them attempting to be, well, them. I'm gonna call this a token, and this is going to be a string, and it is required. So we're going to derive, this is gonna be serialize. Okay, uh, all right, so we are going to respond with a result. Uh, JSON of a response user or a status code. All right, we'll throw a to-do in here at the bottom. All right, first things first, we need to actually just create the user, right? So we need, um, uh, we need, we're gonna use the active model. So we're just gonna do tasks, uh, active model, So we're gonna create this uh, here, fill the struct fields, semicolon in this just, just so we can get this all in nice and one line. Okay, we're not gonna create it with an ID. So we're not gonna have that. And let me come down to the bottom and do our default default thing. Um, priority, I am gonna leave that as what the, uh, oh wait, task priority. No, I don't want tasks. I did the wrong one. Users, active model. You fill your structs. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. Uh, okay, so instead of ID, I want this to be default default. Um, username. We are going to definitely set use. This is going to be a set. Import set uh, as the request user dot username. Password. You're also going to be a set uh, request user dot password. Now. For those of you who know security, you're probably screaming at the screen saying, no, don't do it. Uh, this is what we call plain text uh, user uh, passwords in the database. And this is a big no-no in the security world. Uh, and that's because it's generally, you just have to generally assume somebody's gonna gain access to your database eventually and just get access to all your users' passwords. Um, we're going to start with this sort of bad practice, just to understand it, not add too much complexity all at once, we're going to come back in a future video and change this from plain text to a hashed password, where then it's very hard for people to get into. But we'll get into that more later. All right, delete that. If you're not deleted that, that can be uh, default and plain. Um, token, so normally we would do we would create like a special type of token that we can verify later that's going to be in a different video so for right now just sort of like to show off what type of token we we want this to be normally random but i'm also a little bit lazy and we know we're going to be changing this later so i'm going to use um totally random token uh we're going to own this um, and you are a, the token is a, oh, the, the token is an option string. This needs to be a sum. Like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so we create you, and then I want to save. 
uh, pass in a reference to the database. Uh, we want to await. Uh, we then want to map error. So if we do get the error, we want to just return a status code, internal server error. Uh, then we want to question mark you. And if this all works, we're going to get a new user out of here. All right, so our new user is an active model of users. And we've, uh, we've actually got it. If it's, if it's gotten to the, to, through this point, we actually have our new user, which means we can now uh, take this and then build our response object. So this is, how do we want to actually create this? Uh, I could just um, pull this out right here as part of the okay. So okay, we're gonna have JSON, and then inside of here, we're gonna have a response user. All right. And we have our username, ID, and token. Okay, well, our username is a little bit upset about right now because we don't have it. Well, let's let's fix that. So we want this to be a string. So uh, we have our new user. So new user dot username, right? Simple, except we have a problem. Uh, we have mismatch types here. If I hover over this, uh, we expected a string, okay, but we get this active value. So we have an active model and then each um, each sort of like item in here is an active value type. And then the, the actual value is contained in it. We can actually see that here because we have an active value string. So we need to sort of like extract out what this is. Now in CRM, there is something called a unwrap that we can use. Now this is not the exact same unwrap that you can use on an option. Uh, but it is a manual method that's been added to the active value struct that allows us to take, um, take is the wrong word because there actually is a method called take here. It allows us to just, well, extract out what this value is and then it crashes if it's not there. But we know it's there because we just created it. So I feel pretty safe doing a unwrap. So unwrap and now username is happy. Let's do the same for these. So we have a, a new user, ID, unwrap. Uh, token, same exact thing. So new user, token, unwrap. Uh, mismatch, oh, and this needs to be, let's see, it's an option. So we wanna unwrap, unwrap. So it's two unwraps here because uh, we unwrap first, to get the value out of the token, but then that was already an option string. So now we have an option string in here. Let's just, we just unwrap it, unwrap it again. I could also mark you as an option in this case. We're not gonna do right now. Okay, so back to create account. If I now create, you know, send this, we get back. Uh, username Brooks ID two. I apparently already had a user in the database, and here is this totally random, not going to be the same for everybody token uh, in here. So, in uh, in the next videos, we're going to be going over how to use this token to potentially like what, how to log in, how we can do logout, and how we can guard routes to use that token. So, I'm gonna mark this as done. Uh, hopefully, this is helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.